Live from Nice, France, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman, happy to be joined on the program by two gentlemen from Intel. We have Michael Kowalik, uh, Michal Kowalik, sorry, and Justin Wheeler. Thank you both for joining us uh, today. Pleasure. Uh, Michal, uh, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about sure. you know, your role, how long you've been at Intel, a little bit about your background. Oh, uh, I might skip uh, how long I've been at Intel because I will reveal how old I am. <laughs> but I run sales with uh, ISVs. Uh, so um, as you can imagine, Nutanix is one of our top partners in hyper-converged, and it's a pleasure to be here in Nice and see all those crowds interested in software defined. So happy to be here. All right, so, so you, you're saying you've been through a couple of cranks of Moore's cycle, uh, Moore's, Moore's it's law. Been a, it's been a long, 17 years yeah, now. We, we, we say bring the Intel people, tick tock, you know, we keep, keep <laughs> yes. it moving. All right, J Justin, uh, same, same question for you. Tell us a little bit about your background and how long you've been at Intel. Yeah, I'm a storage solutions architect with uh, the non-volatile memory solutions group, thankfully called NSG for short, one of the good uses for acronyms. Um, so basically I talk about anything flash, anything solutions orientated around storage. Um, so quite a broad ranging subject, but very entertaining one, and one that I enjoy immensely as well. So. All right, so, so Michal, uh, you know, what, what brings Intel to the event? Of course, you know, most of the Nutanix deployments, you know, run on some flavor right. of, of, of your processors, but maybe take us a little bit beyond that as to, you know, sure. what the partnership looks like. Sure, yeah. I understand. So, the reason we're working with uh, Nutanix uh, is uh, because we believe that uh, there are key partners uh, to uh, change the market uh, of the software defined and the general, the data center, into the hyper-converged. So, we're working with the key partners and the fastest uh, uh, running rabbits like Nutanix to uh, talk to our end customers for them to see the benefit. What is uh, what is a hyperconverged? What is software defined data center? And with Nutanix, we're able to turn those customers into the newest technologies the fastest. So it's it's more about the new technologies. It's more about the new workloads, new use cases. That's why we're here. We really appreciate the business of Nutanix, but we're here to make it faster, better, bigger. Yeah, Ju Justin, you actually gave a presentation uh, here at the show. Yeah. Sounds like it it ties in a lot of those themes. Why, why don't you give us a little bit of thumbnail of what you were talking about? I mean, so basically, building on what Mikhail was saying, um, technologies evolved massively. You know, the way people are thinking about infrastructures, especially from a storage perspective, the agility that the new solutions provide around hyperconvergence. Um, you know, the, really the technology that enables that is, is the main part of what the, the, the talk was this morning. Um, so NVMe becoming more mainstream as devices um, with the prevalence of U.2 being connectivity of choice in most servers nowadays. So really kind of like dropping the shackles of the old ways of doing things and, and how we fit in yeah. with that from CPU, storage, and networking perspective. Yeah, I, I, I heard in the keynote this morning, uh, you know, Skylake and NVMe were the two things that you know, yeah. made, made me think of what, what your organization's doing, yes? Very much so, and I think we're still at, we're actually at the bottom of the rung, as I mentioned in the conversation this morning. Um, you know, there's so much more development that can be done. It's an exciting time to be involved, you know, and being point with these guys at Nutanix is, is one of the key things. You know, this is, this is storage central for us. The, the, you know, the story that we have is very much hand in glove with what these guys uh, you know, uh, want to achieve as well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, when we think about customers, one of the challenges they always have is upgrade cycles. And upgrade cycles have actually been useful for Intel, but when we go to hyperconverge, in some ways I think it would make it easier for you know, how we manage those upgrades. Is there a, any commentary on that? Yeah, sure, and so we're working with Nutanix on an ongoing basis, and we had a very interesting uh, uh, meetings in Dupai two weeks ago when we sat with Nutanix, okay, how can we turn the customers using current infrastructure, which very often is already software defined, but this is like a few years ago, and they just said, we need to go there with the demo kits. You know, you're talking about the small computers, three tiers, and we're just showing them, look, you just plug it in, you put a few workloads, Bob is your uncle. So that, that's, that's, how we, that's how we can accelerate together the refresh, the replacements, and basically make their lives better and easier. I mean, the, the more with less story is, is quite something that most people's blood would run cold in, especially if you're on the sales side of things. But given, like I said, what Mikael was saying there, you know, we've got Minish and Nux that we can actually go out and we can run what was previously considered an enterprise class storage solution on a couple of desktop PCs yeah. in effect now. You know, the, the agility is really the key thing here. You know, when you're talking about hyper-converged software defined, or converged solutions, whatever you know, iteration you're looking at there, the agility this brings 
happens to you modern day nowadays yeah. is, is just fantastic and it's a it's a compelling story and it's getting out there and telling the people about it you know shout it from the rooftops you yeah. know but it's not just the the technical it's also the business case around it it's hand, yeah, it's hand in glove again. Yeah. Yeah. Just how does AHV fit into that? Uh, is Intel pretty much agnostic on that, or is there anything uh, special from the hypervisor standpoint? Uh, that no, I mean that's that's one of the best things about Intel. I mean, previous jobs I've had, we've I've been a one-trick pony, or, or you know, then only talk about storage. I mean, as I said early on, we've got all three major components of any solution nowadays. So that's a networking, compute, and storage. We work across them. Same with the uh, application perspective, workloads. For us, we don't have to be specific about it. We talk about what's good for the customer, what they want from their storage infrastructure. And it's not just from a technical perspective, it's how they view their business evolving. Yeah. Again, we we'll come back to the agility word. And uh, it's, it's very it, much what we're about. And it's exactly how we do it. So uh, uh, Intel is uh, well known and someone, uh, sometimes a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, too well known of putting a lot of benchmarks, lots of features. So what we're doing right now with all the hypervisors and basically the software-defined data centers is we're showing the use case benchmark. So, uh, dear customer, you have a you have a SQL on your uh, on your bare metal. Um, here's the benchmark. Here's how faster it's going. Here's uh, more reliable it is. Or here's the disaster recovery stuff we have together. So we're, we're no longer talking about the pure performance. We're talking about what is the value for end customer for implementing opt-ins, implementing Skylakes, or any other technology. You've got commonality that needs to be maintained. People have invested a large amount of um, money in skill sets of uh, individuals in their departments. You know, you've got to take into consideration also their cloud strategy, whatever that may be, whether it be hybrid, whether that be full cloud, you know, moving, migrating workloads and data in and out. You know, it's a big part of it. So it's not a one solution fits all. Everyone's built differently. People will look at via, you know, uh, ESXi, they'll want Acropolis, they'll want KVM, they'll want Hyper-V. We play against, we play across all of those. That's the fun part of the job. Yeah. Uh, what, what feedback are you getting from customers you know, at the event or just in general around Nutanix space? What do we get? It's easy to deploy uh, for starters. Uh, it's a highly skilled uh, sales force, uh, very good technical support. And we're trying to follow Nutanix. Uh, we have uh, engineering support on our side as well. So whatever, wherever we can help, whatever we can in, uh, um, uh, improve or uh, increase velocity of those replacements we're, we're going to get. But customers are generally happy with Nutanix, which we're very happy with, because for us, again, one of the key partners to drive the hyper infra infrastructure. I mean, as we mentioned earlier on, the story was out. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good story to tell. You just got to look at the attendance here today to see how well oh, thought yeah. of Nutanix are as a company. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're just at the bottom rung here. You know, when you're actually talking about replacement of traditional tier one storage systems towards a hyperconvergence, you want to make sure that that is something that's easy to deploy, easy to manage, cost effective. There's not a lot not to like about the yeah. Nutanix solution. So you can see that by the attendance here. Everyone speaks very highly of it. You know, and uh, I, I think it's just a snapshot of the people that's here. Technically, it makes sense. Commercially, it makes sense. You know, just any any tips from your presentation? Uh, you know, for, for customers as to you know help them just get, get things done even simpler than what they've been doing before. Well, I thought when you were talking about tips about the thing, I was going to say don't drink Red Bull before we give a good presentation. <laughs> but um, but no. Um, consultative approach is really the way to go about it. Don't believe everything that you hear. Um, I'm self-confessed, you know, not a great fan of benchmark figures because they're unrealistic in many de uh, workloads that's out there nowadays. The key thing for us is come and talk to us, let us consult with you, with our partners, understand your business, your workloads, the deployment side of things comes very easy after yeah. that. You've got to do the groundwork though. You can't just dismiss, you know, good design practice or good best practice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the, the the entry point to start playing and doing things with Nutanix is, is pretty low. They make it easy to, to test things out. And almost every customer I talked to was like, they had to prove themselves. And it's yeah. a testament to Nutanix that, you know, they've got so many customers yeah. and they keep growing because if they couldn't deliver on what they said, they wouldn't be where they are. Uh, yeah. th that is correct, and a funny thing is, uh, in a conversation with Nutanix, how can we help them to accelerate the deployments or accelerate the demos, so this, this very beginning, they said that we actually don't want to use the full-fledged boxes because the customers want, don't want to give them back. 
yeah, so yeah. we have to have something smaller because so they, they they need to buy it at some stage. So it was a it was like a, it was a very good comment that it means it works and yeah. uh, Nutanix knows how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think if I read Diraj was like he loves to saying that you know they can fit in a processor in the palm of his hand and we stick it in a drone. I think he wants to be able to deliver it to the customer, have them demo it, and then he'll like remote control fly it back after a certain. That's period of time already so that possible. With Intel it. technology, yeah. it will yeah, be yeah. pleasure <laughs> to deploy it. Yeah. I mean, as as with every, everything, you know, to use the architectural sense, everything. That's sturdy and it's lasted years has been built on solid foundations. You get the foundations right on any infrastructure, and it's the same with that. It'll, it'll be there. You can build on it. You can um, you can you know continue on and then evolve as as business grows. So you've got to be able to build something that you can roll with. Yeah. Right. Well, Justin, Michael, really appreciate you sharing us the update on Intel's partnership uh, with Nutanix. We'll be back here with lots more coverage from Nutanix.next in East France. I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE. Thank you.